Okay. Good morning, Faith Lutheran Church. Good yeah. Uh, this is just a reminder this mask, uh, Halloween's coming, so new kind of mask for everybody. <laughs> but anyway, uh, next week is Reformation. So if you'd like to wear red, that would be a good idea. It kind of just adds to the festivities. Um, it's uh, also uh, going to be daylight savings time the week after. So just kind of have a little heads up so you get an extra hour of sleep that time. But next week, just red, and we'll be looking at uh, the Reformation and its impact in our lives. This week... Uh, is the last week here we're on the roadblocks. We've had the keys to the kingdom. If you want some key rings, by the way, we have those. We don't, don't have the pictorial directory this week. We'll have it next week. Sorry about that. But we do have Christ in our home sitting over here, and that's already started. So uh, do pick up your copy of that. It's a good way to keep focused. And uh, we did talk about one of the roadblocks to living out this road that God has for us to joy in our lives is dealing with rejection in our lives and remembering the goal that we have in life. So there can be loneliness, emptiness as well. As you live out God's plan, it can move you away from some other people. But uh, I like this statement from uh, Stephen Hawking. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. He also said this though, never give up, uh, never give up work. Work gives you meaning and purpose in life is empty without it. So uh, if you'd like to help out at the pantry, you can do that this week. You know, that's a nice work, a good deed of work to do. Um, and also, uh, number three, if you're lucky enough to find love, remember it is there and don't throw it away. And that's a bit what I want to talk about today. You know, as Jesus is faced with situation of talking religion and politics. So normally people don't, kind of avoid religion and politics if you want to stay friendly with your neighbor and that sort of thing because it can be very divisive, can break some relationships, but Jesus helps us understand how to do that in this illustration of the coin. He's confronted with the big issue of the day, which is what to do about the Roman oppression in, the, in the Israel at the time. And he has an answer for them and they leave amazed. So hopefully you'll leave amazed today as we consider that. But let's first uh, know our foundation is that God is great in our lives. So our opening hymn is Great is the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. prayer of the day. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <coughs> okay, we're going to look at three different texts, and each of them tell us a little bit about how we can approach political discussions. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. I just want to point out here, Cyrus was not Jewish, okay? He was Persian, he was coming in to conquer the Babylonians. But whose right hand God has grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who called you by name for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen. I call you by your name. I surname you, though you did, although you did not, you do not know me. Okay, again, Cyrus does not know about God. He's not Jewish. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and I create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Second reading is from First Thessalonians. So we've looked at uh, Philippians and now a new letter, Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, 
Silvanus and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before God and our and our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecutions, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example for all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but every place your faith in God has become known so that we have no need to speak of it. For the people of those regions report about, uh, uh, report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said, so they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. It is, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. May be seated. Okay, like I say, we've been talking about the keys. You got the keys to a joyful journey with God, and some of the ro roadblocks for us that can come in are like rejection, but if we have the goal that we have in mind, that can be overcome. There can be emptiness and loneliness, but we remember, you know, God's presence in the universe and that love is there. We can move forward. But how about religion and politics? We're supposed to have another presidential debate. Everybody looking forward <laughs> to, to it on Thursday night? Can be a pretty divisive thing, you know, politics in our age right now, dividing people. This is our neighbor talking to us about politics. <laughs> I took a picture. No, just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> he's not our neighbor anymore. <laughs> Something happened to him. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, it can be really harming to relationships, you know, so much focus on that. And what I gotta say is, it is not new, okay? In the Bible, when Paul is writing to this church, it's not to Thessalonica, people are doing great. A wonderful report has gone out to this whole region, but that's not always the case. Uh, for example, when he writes to the Corinthians, this is 1 Corinthians 1.10, so he didn't take much time to tell them, hey, 
Let there be no division among you. So it's a little out of control in Corinth for Paul. Well, our texts help us how to figure this out. At least take a little of the energy out so we don't get all red-faced in uh, when we're talking politics, okay? One thing to remember that Isaiah says is God's in control. You got to remember that. One thing that Paul tells us is that you're chosen, okay? You're chosen. You got an opinion. You got a thought about this. Well, God touches each of us in different ways. We're all part of the body. We're not all supposed to have the same opinion. Otherwise, we shouldn't vote. We don't need to vote because everybody has the same mind anyway, so who needs it, okay? And the third is relationships are important. Well, here come the Pharisees, along with the Herodians, who are really on different sides, but what unites them is they got one common enemy in Jesus, and so they want to have a gotcha moment. Have you ever seen people want to get a gotcha moment? Maybe you watch the you know, uh, hearings there for the Supreme Court or just these debates and that sort of thing. They're looking for a gotcha moment. And here's the gotcha moment in that time. Okay, so the Romans ruled the whole Mediterranean area. That's all this area in red that you see here. Uh, <clears throat> there was still something of the Persian Empire still around, actually. But here is Rome, well, really with its, uh, you know, the people of Judah underneath its thumb. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I wonder if they'll have that in that debate where you turn off the mic. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> it's working again now. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> here the Romans had their thumb on the people of Israel. And when they come to Jesus, then here's the gotcha moment. Should we revolt against the Romans? or just continue to be subservient to them? What should we do? And basically, it's a bad, 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 bad choice. It's like me deciding I want to do um, big time wrestling. What do they call it now? Is it still big time wrestling? That's when I was a kid, it was big time wrestling. I love that. So I knew uh, one of the big time wrestlers too, was a member of our former parish as well. Anyway, throwing me into the ring. Well, everybody knows <laughs> I'm going to be the loser if I go against the rock here. So that was one option. Take on Rome and get defeated, which they had on various occasions gotten defeated. And then they'll finally be the big loss after Jesus' ministry is over. Or do you be subservient to them, just kind of continuing to allow them to be in command of your people. It was a real division point. And really, the Herodians and Pharisees at the time did not see eye to eye on this either. And sometimes you only have bad choices, but you still have to choose. And that's really what the people of Israel did. So Jesus tells, says, give me a coin. Let me look at the coin. Well, what's on the coin? It's an image of the emperor. So give to the emperor what's the emperor's and to God what's God. Well, that's what they disagreed on. The zealot said, this is ours. This isn't God's, so we should take it back. And the other said, well, it's the emperor's coin. Why don't we just you know, collect taxes for it? Uh, this is actually one of the coins, by the way. We still find those things here and there. <laughs> I don't know what the cat's after over on the side there. <laughs> Do you think we should close the door to the church, honey? I mean, <laughs> this is uh, animal friendly, by the way, if you come to church here, but uh, <laughs> when we get back inside, not, not so much. So, Anyway, among Jesus' disciples, now this is super interesting. This is Matthew writing this and attributed to Matthew, one of the disciples, who is a tax collector. So he's collecting taxes for Caesar, okay? And here, Simon the Zealot. And you know, you have this list of disciples, you gotta pass it by. But the Zealot, those were people wanting to overthrow the Romans. So how can you have a tax collector 
and a zealot. I mean, that is the extreme of the time. Together as one of 12 disciples. We're only talking 12 disciples. And you got two of them like that. Now the zealots in the end kind of had their day, okay? And Roman, Rome came down hard. This is after the ministry of Jesus, but before Matthew would have completed writing his gospel, that the whole temple area is destroyed. And you maybe know the story of Masada. That was the last kind of breath of these zealots. They're up on this hill. And I'll tell you what, that, that is a hill all by itself. I mean, Herod had a place for himself and nobody was gonna get to him. They had to build a ramp to get up to it and they probably had Israelites building the ramp to get up there so that they wouldn't be killed. <laughs> Whatever. You know, this outside service, you got to deal with everything, don't you? So <laughs> what happened afterwards? The Jewish people were dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. This is a map of them being thrown everywhere throughout the empire, okay? But where are the churches? that Paul is writing to. They are these places where the Jews went. And that was a horrible defeat. I mean, these, there was siege, there were people dying of starvation in Jerusalem, and then they finally conquered it. And in Masada, they were just ready to come on up, and then they just committed suicide, all the people on the inside. So uh, I think there were a couple of people they didn't get to, but anyway, that was the idea of Masada. They were gonna just kill, them, kill themselves. How could God use that in a positive way? Well, <clears throat> it's not a positive thing. It's a lousy choice, it's bad. But God was able to use it to start all these uh, synagogues that had people, Gentile people who were on the outside kind of looking in, what are the Jews doing and things like that. And it was Paul coming to those synagogues first and normally not having great success. But the God-fearing Gentiles who were kind of looking in on the Jewish people, they were very receptive to what Paul had to say. So it was a horrible thing that happened for the people of Israel, but God was able to use it in spite of the horror of the situation. And that's Isaiah's word, is that God is in control. He is talking to the people, they're stuck in Babylon, they're in exile. This is a horrible situation for them, but Anything meant for, in this world, for evil, God can use for good. Not that it's good, it's still evil, but it, it still allows an opportunity for God to use it. God is able to make the mess of our past and turn it into a message. I thought that was kind of cute. And then he takes our trials and tests and turns them into a testimony. And this one I liked uh, from Rick Moore, and uh, God specializes in turning uh, crucifixions into resurrections. And Rick Warren, his own son, committed suicide. I don't know if all of you know that, but a uh, large church in uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Saddleback. That's right. That's the name of the church, Saddleback. So he sees God in control. Isaiah saw God in control. And if God's in control, you know, it's good to have political opinions. We're asked to vote. We're supposed to put out there what we're thinking. But it takes a little of the energy away if we feel like God's in control of this thing underneath. And the Babylonian Empire <clears throat> in Isaiah's time was overcome by Cyrus the Great. And that's what our first lesson was about. He said, my servant Cyrus. Well, Cyrus wasn't his servant. He wasn't Jewish. He didn't even know him. Remember in our text, he did not, know, you don't even know me, but God can use him in spite of it. And uh, <clears throat> here they came across and destroyed the Babylonian Empire, which allowed the Jews to go back home, those that were in exile. <clears throat> Again, God even used exile because we probably wouldn't have the Old Testament written down, at least at the time it was, if it wouldn't been for the exile because when they were in Israel, people could tell the stories each to one another. But once they were in exile, they knew they would start getting lost. So that's why they wrote them down. So the Old Testament was really compiled and put together there in Babylon. But now they come back and now they have to rebuild. It's a very difficult situation for them. But God has used 
Cyrus, this person that wasn't even a God-fearing person, to do something good for the Jewish people. So Isaiah's word is, always believe, have faith, and pray. And instead of an I got you moment, I got you, God, says to us, I got you, okay? So, I mean, somebody's going to be disappointed when the vote comes in, but underneath you say, well, God's got me. I'm, I'm cradled in the love of God. God is in control. If Isaiah can say it, sitting out in Babylon in exile, then we can know that too. If the people in the time of Jesus, as he's talking to them, says, you know, there are things of Caesar, but there are things of God. If Paul, who's persecuted, can say the day of Jesus is coming, then he knows that God's got him. Paul goes on to say, you are chosen, and that the people of Thessalonica were examples to other people. <laughs> that cat has wandered through the entire building here and now is back out in the back and went, whatever. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to be talking about next. Not the cat, but each of us have our own journey to make, okay? God's chosen us. We're not all the same. We're not all supposed to be the same. If everything was the same, we wouldn't have, you know, beautiful flowers. And thanks to all the people that worked yesterday. Maybe we, can, can I have you just stand real quick? All the people that helped yesterday. Let's give you a quick little hand here. Yay. Oh, George, that's it. And we planted uh, some plants out this way. And we don't want every plant to look the same. It's boring. What a yawner. You don't want every sermon to be the same, although some of them are so good. You want, you want to be able to repeat, put it on that DVR. And let, so it is on the website so you can hear it again if you want to. But we're each unique people. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you. If you have faith in God, and remember, God has faith in you, okay? So, again, you're not supposed to have the same opinions as everybody else. God has chosen you particularly. And know this, all the people that God can use. Noah, great person, but if you read the first story that happened after he got back, uh, landed on the mountain there, he planted a vineyard and got drunk. Abraham, pretty old guy, Isaac, Daydreamer, Jacob, a liar, uh, Leah. Leah was ugly. I don't know. I get these off the internet. I don't know. I don't want to put Leah down. But anyway, Joseph was really down in the rung there, that's for sure, in prison. Uh, Moses had a stuttering problem, but also had killed an Egyptian soldier. Gideon was afraid. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Rahab was a prostitute. God can use us all, no matter what the past is, and God likes our particularity, too. St. Francis said this, if God can work through me, he can work through anyone. Well, I'll say, St. Francis is way up there in my book. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting to St. Francis level myself, but I, I am who I am, and God has called me, and therefore... Since God has created me, I live out as I think God has called me to do. Some of which was putting down bark, like yesterday. <laughs> Put faith in God, and then you have confidence in yourself, too. This is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. I uh, mentioned this in my message this week. We've got some difficult days ahead, but really it doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. What had happened for Martin Luther King Jr. was he'd been to the mountaintop. What is God calling me in particular to do? So you envision God's calling to you. And it's not the same as everybody else. And it shouldn't be the same as everybody else. Like I said yesterday, putting down mulch. I like this quote of uh, Abraham Lincoln. Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side. For God is always right. So... What we're trying to do is align ourselves with God's motion of love in the world. And that dissolves our fear. So it's faith in God, faith also in yourself. 
You're not supposed to be like everybody else. And the more you travel to the mountain and understand what God's calling you to do, the more you can live that out in joy. And then also faith in other people too. One of the things that Jesus teaches us in this gospel is relationships are important. So Jesus has the tax collector and the zealot. He's got Judas. And on the last evening, he says, the one who's dipped in the same bowl as I have will betray me. So Jesus is right next to Judas, the last supper. He hangs in there with people. Now, Haile Selassie, not one of my heroes, but he said this, no one should question the faith of others for human being can, no human being can judge the ways of God. We're all supposed to be different. Some are more, you know, I don't know, a grape-like or more like a pineapple or whatever than other people, but we're not all supposed to be the same. One of the things that was great about Billy Graham, you know, he was a kind of a pastor to all the presidents, and no matter who the president was, he tried to link in with that president. And uh, Rick Warren, who I mentioned earlier, had one of his quotes. He had, remember, uh, John McCain and Barack Obama together. He got in trouble for that. He said, he was kind of like Jesus. You make your choice. You should only choose one of these candidates to have up here on the stage, not both of them. But again, here is a person who kind of saw the variety of what God is calling us into. And we're supposed to vote. I already voted, in fact. It's kind of nice and easy, you know, with these mail-in ballots. So vote, because we all have different opinions. So we need to be heard. All of us need to be heard. Because if we don't vote, then we're not heard. And God has chosen each of us. And each of us go to the mountain and hear different things, what God has to say. So we got to come down and we have to let our voice be known. It's a beautiful tapestry that God is putting together. So with faith in God, faith in yourself, faith in others, faith can move mountains. So I like this quote, patience with others is love, patience with self is hope, patience with God is faith. And it's that kind of thing that can bring us together, I think, as a country, because it takes a lot of the energy out of this uh, angst that's out there so that we can be mm, brothers and sisters in Christ in a deep way, deeper way. Let's pray for that. Lord, we thank you so much that you're always with us in our lives, that you called each of us uniquely to be your disciples. And among your disciples, you had a variety of people so thank you, Lord, for that wonderful example, and help us, Lord, to go to the mountaintop and to see what you are calling us to do. In your name we pray. Amen. you to join with me in prayer and I do want to say thank you to those who've been praying for Alec his hands better and he's 
appreciating where he's at a lot better, so that's really great. But we do want to pray for Glenda's family, uh, Glenda Kirker, uh, because uh, they're near the fires there in Fort Collins. I don't know if you've read about the fires also in Colorado that they're having. So they may have to evacuate. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share the, your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers and missionaries and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant Luke, the evangelist whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation from the rising of the sun to its setting. May the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living in pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Remember Becky and Brendan, Mike, Alec, Dick. We remember Glenda Kirker and her family, those infected with COVID. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of voters, justice, uh, justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in in you. We remember Jan Wheeler's friend Alan, Lou Hitter's father, Louis Sr. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Holy Father. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy. For on this day, Christ rose from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with a light that will not fade. This day, risen Lord, you walk with your gathered people. Enfold us in your word and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overcome this day, you summon us to live with you in endless light. And so, with the choirs of angels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending hymn.
invite you to receive communion. Just have your mask on as you approach and then take it off to receive the communion. I invite you to join me in prayer. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare and lead us from this place nourished and forgiven in your beloved vineyard, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father cares for us as a loving mother. We are blessed with the Son and the Holy Spirit to lead us. So depart and live in truth and grace. Amen. Amen.
We do have the uh, landscape group that's going to be meeting on Monday at 2, right during the Chiefs game, so thanks for that. And then <laughs> and, uh, we have a council meeting also this week at 5 on Tuesday, and I think next week we should sing something from Cats, maybe. <laughs> anyway, next week we're at Red, if you remember. <laughs> Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Yeah.